Hi, for this video we're going to talk about a very, very powerful package in R for visualizations. It's called ggplot. GG stands for the grammar of graphics. You can think of ggplot as basically a mathematical mapping system of taking data to visualizations. So, you know, this is very much like a, a more complicated function from my college algebra. It's just it's more general than what we're used to when we think about functions in the pre-calculus calculus sense. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go through an example using the Titanic data set once again. And uh, you know, I, I hope this proves to you that ggplot is super, super useful, super, super powerful. I use this every day at work. This is how I've made a name for myself in my organization is that having really good visualizations that tell a story very quickly so that the stakeholders know what's going on. And I, uh, I show it to them. I, it convinces them of what's going on and they make a decision and we move on very quickly. This is how I have a lot of uh, influence in my organization is because of my uh, visualizations. All right, so in the document, we're going to be using the Titanic data set. So the Titanic data set is in Canvas if you want to go ahead and run all this code yourself. Uh, as always, we have to do a data prep before we can actually do the analysis we want to do. So I load the data. Then I go ahead and remove the variables that I don't actually want to use. So these are all variables that I could potentially want to use down the road. We're only going to use a few of them. We're going to use survived, sex, cabin, and class. And then you know we, we convert survive to uh, a, a word format instead of binary. And then we just indicate if the cabin information is in the data or not. And we deal with a missing value here. We, have, we convert uh, class to third, second, and first in, in that order. And we just go through and we just set up the data to be the type of uh, data that we want to have as we go through. And we deal with our missing values. All right, so now let's start actually focusing on what we want to do. What we want to do we want to uh, make a visualization. Okay, so I'm going to use the ggplot2 package. Okay, so there was for a very short time period a ggplot, I guess, one package, but there were some problems with it. So Hadley Wickham, the author, uh, just went ahead and pulled it down. He improved it, built upon it. He created ggplot2. The R community picked up on this whole grammar of graphics thing as being really solid, really good uh, format to go. So then a lot of people have co have contributed to this package and ancillary packages to support it. It's an amazing, well-supported package. Okay, so grammar of graphics. How we need to approach this is that we have layers. We have we have different layers for our visualization and. The first one is like the data layer. The data layer is called with ggplot. And then I put in my data. Now the next one is the aesthetics, AES. All right, so the aesthetics, this is where I, I put in, what does each variable do? So for here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna be making bar plots. And so I'm gonna use the survived uh, uh, variable as my X. You know, I could also have another variable as a Y. Another one will be fill or color or um, possibly shape, transparency. There's a whole bunch of different aesthetics that I can use if I want to make it more interesting plots uh, for different types. Here we're just going to do some bar plots and we're going to keep it at that. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to what, just show you the overall structure, how like the schema of this works. And then I want you to get interested and I hope that you'll go out and look this up on your own and start digging in. This is really, really good if you want to do uh, data professionally. Now the next layer is called the geome layer. This is where we actually build the statistics aspect of what's going on. If I have geome histogram, it's going to build a histogram. If I have geome uh, box plot, it's going to make box plots. Uh, geome call is going to make column uh, column plots, bar, you know, similar to bar plots. Um, so I've got three layers here, 
and inside the parentheses is how I modify these layers and with the plus sign I can keep on adding more layers. So it is possible for me to use more than one geome. If I want more than one geome then I would put plus and then the next type of geome I, I want. So if I ha let's say I have a scatter plot I could go geome point that's for scatter plots it puts points it puts dots on the plot and I could put geome label after it and they'll put a label on all of my points on my scatter plot and that's very informative it's very good practice to put labels onto uh, your plots whenever you can it makes it more informative all right so let's see what does this look like okay so I mean we can see very quickly that we've got you know just over 800 died and uh, just under 500 survived now Something about this data set, if you look up the historical aspects of the Titanic, there were more passengers than what's in this data set. This is the data I got from the Kaggle uh, Titanic uh, data set competition. So uh, it's, it's missing some passengers. For our purpose, it's okay. But just know that this is not the actual, true, correct, full data set. We're missing some people. All right, so if I look at this... I can see that you know I have my x-axis labels going and I've got my counts but you know I need a title because if somebody looks at it I need a title for them to know what's going on so let's go ahead and let's add a title that's done with adding a gg title command okay so you'll notice the first quotation is the title the second quotation is like the subtitle so what you'll notice what I did I put a subtitle to indicate where did I get the data uh, that way if someone questions what I did questions my conclusions they can go look it up and verify for themselves it's good practice in your visualizations to say where I got my data and or and when I got my data if it's a data set that will change over time uh, you can put it here or another good spot is to put it down the bottom with a, a caption command within the labs function instead of gg title either way works it's a good idea to do you know I, I strongly recommend that you do it all right now let's break the data down by sex male and female all right so what i'm going to do now is you see that x is survived that's still the same but now i'm going to fill it in with the, their gender and that's the only thing I'm changing is I've got this fill equals sex inside the aesthetic layer. Let's see what happens. All right, so the title is the same, but now I've got two different colors. So I can very quickly see that the in like the the blue region uh, is those who were male. The red region are female, and so we can see that of those who survived, proportionately more were female of those who died proportionately a very large proportion were male alright so that tells us about when I'm um, like look at those who survived I would be surrounded by uh, females if I was at the morgue looking at those who died there would be a lot of male bodies alright so now looking at this this is not very informative colors you know like these are just the default colors I can do a little bit better so I went ahead and went pink for girls, blue for boys. So what I did was I have a scale fill manual. All right, so there's a special color control uh, function for every single type of coloring thing that you could possibly have. And whenever you do ggplot, you really need to look up uh, the function you want whenever you build the, the functions. I don't need to look it up anymore because I do it so often, but anytime that I'm using a type of geome that I'm not familiar with, a new type of plot that I don't use very often, I have to look this up. Alright, so I go ahead and put pink and sky blue. Now remember how I have it set up, female comes first because that's alphabetically first, then male. So pink, then sky blue. Let's see what that looks like. All right, that's a little bit easier to see. Uh, it's kind of blending in with the gray background, but you know, it's uh, pink is a little bit more intuitive for female. So let's go with that. And you know, if you go into a toy section uh, for boys, you'll see a lot more blue and dark colors. So this is this will 
uh, translate easier for the reader if I have multiple plots and I, I use the same colors for each gender throughout all my plots they'll help the reader interpret what's going on a lot faster all right so now you know if I think about this this is you know like the proportion if I'm looking at those who survived and this is a proportion if I'm in the morgue looking at those who died that's not really what I'm really interested in I'm interested in if I was on the ship would I survive that, that's really what I'm most interested in so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna switch now sex is gonna be the x-axis and the fill is gonna be the survived and I'm gonna change the colors so red is bad green is good And those are good colors for bad and good, by the way, in general. And so now I can see that, well, there were more passengers on the Titanic that were male than there were a female. All right. I mean, that's something kind of interesting in there. And we can see that, wow, like, I mean, the, I mean, the majority of females survived and the majority of males died. At least those are included in the data set. All right. Well, you know, this, this is looking interesting. On this next one... I want to make it a little bit more precise on what the picture looks like. So if I have a lot of bar plots, it can make it easier for the reader to interpret what's going on if they can see through the bar plots and they can see the grids behind them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce some transparency. Here are the transparency. I'm putting it to 50% transparency. The alpha parameter is the transparency. Now, one thing to notice. Alpha is not a con so is alpha is a constant, not a variable. If it goes in the aesthetics layer, it's a variable. If it goes in the geome, it's a constant, and that's something you need to be mindful of when you uh, build your own uh, visualizations. That constants go in the geomes, and variables go in the aesthetic. All right, so that improves it. You know, I can you know see it's a little bit easier to see uh, that it was just over 200 males survived and just under 400 females survived there, you know, it makes it easier to get more information out of my plot. But you know what? I'm not really feeling it on this gray. This gray background, this is the default background. I think it looks okay. It, I feel like I could do better. When I've collaborated on papers in the past, my collaborators just absolutely hated this, the gray. It's one of the first things they asked me to do was to get rid of it. So I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to change the theme to what uh, ggplot calls black and white. So I'm changing it to theme black and white. So what I'm doing, I'm adding another layer to my visualization. And notice I always have a plus sign between my layers. And now I can see through it. I can see the grid lines. And I have a white background with gray grid which a lot more people prefer. Okay, now something that some people prefer to have the legend at the top. So here I have it on the right hand side. And so we want to have control. Maybe I want to put it on the left, the right, the bottom. Uh, my rule of thumb is if I have a wide plot, I put it at the top. If I have a tall plot because of just how the visualization works out, I like it to the right hand side. My personal preference, uh, my secretary always wants it at the top. Uh, her and I bicker about this. It's not a big deal. Another thing, when my plots start getting, getting crowded, I have a lot of levels to a categorical variable. It helps to rotate the, the axes a little bit. So uh, you could rotate it 90 degrees, but people have to really you know turn their head to be able to read it. If I put 90 degrees, so then it's up and down. 45 degrees tends to be very economical with your space and things that don't get overcrowded, if, you, if they're not going to be overcrowded at least. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go, I'm going to make a new layer. So notice I have theme black and white, and then I have theme here. This is for specifying individual aspects of the theme. Theme black and white changes the overall, this changes the individual ones. Uh, these can uh, like argue with each other. Whichever one is last is the one that has final say on what's going on. So this happens and this changes just a few of these. If I was to switch it, the theme black and white would overwrite, could overwrite some of these features and I don't want that. Let's see what that looks like. 
All right, so I can see that died and survived is up top. I don't like this format because uh, I've got died and survived next to green. So I feel like how it was on the side is actually a better way to go. But this shows you how to do it. And it's a little bit, when things start getting crowded, this 45 degree angle is a good way to put a lot of names, especially if you have longer names going on or you have a lot of levels. And you don't have to turn your neck too much to read them. All right, so now what I want to do, I want to break this down into by class and by cabin. So now this is actually where I get a lot of mileage for work, is that I'm able to put a lot of data, a lot of visualizations into just one plot at one time using the faucet grid or faucet wrap functions. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break the data up into groups by, <clears throat> by cabin and the class of the passenger. So I'm going to end up having six like subplots. What this does, this makes a bunch of subplots where each subplot is the same as this, but I have the data broken up by these two features. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so we've got our plot. I can see that here, these are the third class passengers, second class passengers, first class passengers. These are the passengers whose data is in the cabin, or sorry, his cabin data is in the data. And these are the passengers whose uh, data is not, the cabin data is not in the data set. All right, so when I look at this, I can see immediately that there were a lot more third class passengers who did not have their cabin recorded in the historical data. So, and then I can see that, you know, they got a lot more red than the others, unfortunately. Uh, Females, not as much of a difference, but I mean, look at the difference between uh, male and uh, males on first class where the cabin was recorded and third class where the cabin was not. About the same number of males survived, but that's proportionately very few here. Uh, so I, I think this is very interesting. Um, you know, well, I mean, that's just a little bit of sliver of surviving if you're a second class male. Um, all right, so I, you know, I know that if I ever go back in time onto the, to the, the Titanic, first of all, I don't want to be there. But if I'm going to be on there, I want to be first class. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope everything's going well. Please stay healthy.